Hello and uh, welcome to this video on the IUPAC nomenclature of alcohols. In this particular video, we're going to look at the systematic naming of alcohols and uh, we're going to find out what alcoholic groups are and how do we use the IUPAC system to name them. Well, alcohols, which I'm pretty sure you do have an idea about, that there is a parent chain and there is a OH group attached to it. This group represents the group of an alcohol. And this particular group is also known as a functional group. A functional group is that part of a molecule which determines its most important and principal characteristic of compounds having that particular group. So all alcohols would behave in certain typical ways and therefore this is known as a functional group. Now when you name an alcohol, obviously we need to select the parent chain first. The parent chain is that which contains the carbon which is having the OH group attached to it. Meaning this carbon must always be included in the parent chain. So if you have a situation like this, you have several side chains and somewhere maybe here you have a OH. Then what happens is when you select the parent chain, this particular carbon has to be included in the parent chain. And once it is included, then you look for the longest carbon chain. And then when you want to name it, the name of the alkane, you first determine the number of carbon atoms, name it as an alkane, remove the last E and put OL. Make it an alkanol instead of an alkane. And similarly, if it is an alkene, remove the last E, put alkanol. If it is an alkyne, remove the last E and put alkynol. So let's get the first rule. Select the longest carbon chain containing the OH group. Number the parent chain from the end where the OH group gets the lowest number. Now this is pretty important. The OH carbon, the carbon containing the OH must be given the lowest possible number in the parent chain. The name of the parent ends with all with the elision of E if present from the parent compound. Now let's take an example and see if you're able to get this name right. And as usual, we I, I, I would expect you to pause the video, name this compound, play the video back and then see whether you got the name right or not. So the first thing is to identify the parent chain. Obviously, the parent chain must always contain this carbon atom. And since this seems to be the end of the chain, the parent chain must include this. So we need to go this way and not the left because the number of carbon atoms to the right is more. So the numbering and the numbering has to be done keeping this carbon to have the lowest possible number. And since this is the end carbon, we give it the number one. So the numbering goes this way. And then you have the two attached, you have a, a side chain attached to the carbon two, the side chain. So we need to name this, so we need to number this as well. It goes like this. And in this particular case, this particular side chain is 2-methylbutyl. Now when you want to name the alcohol, remember it should be alken P, if P is the number of the carbon having the OH, all. This represents that the alcoholic functional group is at position P. So this is going to be and so the parent is going to look like hepten 1 all and then you have the prefix of the side chain which is 2 bracket open 2 methyl butyl bracket close so it's going to go like this 2 2 methyl butyl hepten 1 all let's check out one more 
and uh, so again pause the video name it play the video check your answer now again the parent chain must contain this carbon atom but remember this carbon is also attached to one more carbon besides attached to the chain so the parent chain must include this now we can go this way if you go this way how many carbons do we get we get 1 2 3 4 5 6 and what happens if we go this way 1 2 3 4 5 6 again so we are getting six carbon atoms in either case so we select the parent chain based on the number of substituents now if i look at this as the parent chain i have only one substituent at this carbon as you can notice whereas if i take this as the parent chain i get one substituent here and one substituent here that makes it two substituents so therefore what we need to do is take this as the parent chain numbering has to be done from the top so that the carbon having the oh gets the least possible number now this side chain is propyl this side chain is methyl methyl comes before propyl so it's 5 methyl 3 propyl hexen 2 all so that's the name of this particular compound now let's now take a situation where you also have a double bond now how do you name this remember the parent chain must contain the carbon with the oh and then all the rules of alkenes are followed that means we must select the chain having maximum number of double bonds so pause the video name it play it back and then check the answer so which is the parent chain now remember it must include this carbon it must also include these two carbons so i guess there's only one way of looking at the parent chain and that is this this is the parent chain now how do you number this should you give the lowest number to the double bond or the oh oh gets precedence over the double bond so the oh carbon must get the least number so we are going to number it from down 1 2 3 4 5 now on 4 you have methyl sitting here this is the butyl sitting here so and butyl will come before methyl when it comes to naming so it's 3 butyl 4 methyl and it is alk 4 Uh, rather alk 3n 1 all 3 butyl 4 methyl pent 3n 1 all let's take up one more example here we have both double and triple bonds obviously the carbon containing the oh must get included and then we must select the chain having maximum number of multiple bonds and if the number of multiple bonds in two different chains is same maximum number of carbon atoms i could have taken either this i could have taken either this both contain one double bond and in this case one triple bond and if the number of multiple bonds is same then you look for maximum number of carbon atoms and i guess this chain wins over so the numbering again has to be done keeping the carbon having the oh getting the least number so we do the numbering this way and as you can see the name you have on 3 this particular thing sitting is isopropenyl so it's 3 isopropenyl hept 5 in 1 or So this is the way you name alcohols having saturated carbons and unsaturated carbons. I hope you find this video useful. And if you have any questions, any doubts, please drop in the comment at the bottom of this link. And I hope this video helps you in understanding the naming of alcohols. Thanks for watching.